Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16, for all that is in the world. And here's a summary of what the world. You ever hear about worldliness and don't be like the world? All of a sudden, as soon as you say that, everyone just kind of fogs out. Kind of like when you get in your car in the winter and you can't see because you turn the heater on and it fogs that windshield. I can just see the fog coming across. As soon as I say worldly, everybody fogs up out there. It's so unclear. It's kind of like, don't know what you're talking about. Well, John goes right through the fog. He turned on the super defroster, you know, cuts through that fog. He says, here's what it is. Here is all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh... Number one, the lust of the eyes, number two, and the pride of life. So a summary of what worldliness is, is subsumed under those three. It is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. It's, and all these things are not of the Father, but of the world. He repeats. He's very, John is kind of like, uh, you know, knitting stuff together. He's always weaving it. If you know anything about the way John wrote his epistle, it's just these little threads that keep reappearing. He's weaving, and what he's saying is, you want to know what the world is? Lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. That's what's the world. Verse 17, he repeats it. The world, lust of flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, is passing away. And the lusts of it, which are the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. But he who does the will of God which means not loving the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, abides forever. Temptations are enticements from our lusts. And God says that lusts are packaged in various shapes, sizes, and colors. But lust will always fall in these three categories. Let me explain them. Number one, the first one, lust of the flesh. We are tempted by our flesh to chase pleasures. The lust of the flesh equals the cravings of our body. Okay, pretty simple. Lust of the flesh, cravings of the body. What is that? Well, these are all the sensual temptations. These are the lusts for the desires our body has. Often involving, not exclusively, but often they involve another person. And we enjoy or want to enjoy the body of an individual, either mentally or physically, even though such pleasure is illegal and or immoral. We can feed these lusts by going to places where we see uncovered bodies, or watching television and movies that have various stages of immodesty, or by seeking out images in magazines or online that feed these evil desires. But one of the basic lusts is the lust of the flesh. The cravings of the body. And isn't it significant that in each sin list, each time that the biblical writers list off the sins that God's people face, the number one or number two sin is always involved with sensual things, with lusts of the flesh, because we are prone to the lusts of the flesh. But it doesn't stop there. And I know that's the one everyone's thinking about and saying, ha, ha, that's not my problem. It's those dirty old people, those lecherous people. Well, what's the second one? We're tempted by the lust of the eyes. What is that? It's being tempted to chase stuff. Oh, stuff, possessions, things. It equals the lusting of the eyes. These are the material temptations. The lust of the flesh are the sensual temptations. But we're all equally prone to material temptations. This is lust for things. The things could be as large as lusting for a house. Always wanting a bigger, a better, a nicer, a more whatever house. That is a lust. And it drives our economy. People are always leveraging to get more. Bigger, better. That's a lust for material things that drives our culture and a lot of our industries. Or it could be as small as a ring. It could be as bright and dazzling as a new sports car or as dull and dusty as that 200-year-old antique dresser that we must have. But lest we think of this as not as bad as the lust of the flesh, remember that covetousness, what is covetousness? That's not just the 10th Old Testament command. That is a perpetually repeated New Testament prohibition. Covetousness. What is that? Covetousness is the insatiable longing for more 
things. That's why it says don't covet your neighbor's cow or his donkey or his wife or his house. I might add, or his boat or his income or his whatever. You see, we're, our lusts of our eyes are always seeing something we don't have. And covetousness is that insatiable longing for what I don't have and I want it. And people will get the second, the third, the fifth job. They'll do anything to get that thing they want. They'll beg, borrow, or even steal. But remember, covetousness is as damnable as idol worship. It says that. That covetousness in the New Testament is like idolatry. In fact, it is idolatry. It is elevating a possession up to where God should be. He is the only thing, in the positive sense, we should lust after. Remember, there is a positive form. Epithumia is a, is a strong desire. We are with our whole heart to desire God. So if there is a positive lust, it could be lusting after Him, to know Him, to love Him with all of our heart, although we don't usually classify it that way. But remember... The lust for possessions is as wicked as the lust for immorality. Beware of both, for they're deadly. I would say that probably in a congregation this size, for every one that's struggling with sensual temptation, with with this, this smoldering, longing desire for sensual, immoral, uh, prurient, sexual things, that there are probably ten that kind of have that more comfortable one, that they just want nicer things for their collections. And they want a nicer place to keep their collection. And they want nicer everything. You know, the better homes and gardens, that's a comparative degree. That means mine's better than yours. And we have to watch out for that. That's a lust. But thirdly, look back. He doesn't stop there. If he didn't get us with being tempted by our flesh to chase pleasures, uh, the cravings of the body, or tempted by our eyes to chase stuff, the lustings of our eyes, he says, and we're also tempted by pride to chase status. And that equals the boastings of our mouth. These are all the personal temptations. This is selfishness because I'm most important. You know, people are selfish because they think they're more important than everybody else. A selfish person... It's just granted that they'll think they're more important, so they want selfishly the best place for themselves, it's selfishly the biggest, or whatever. Selfishness is part of the pride of life. I'm at the center of my life. This is irritableness because life revolves around me, and I'm irritated if you don't revolve around me. This is untruthfulness because I need to protect my image and myself, and so I will do whatever, I will say whatever, I will enlarge or, or detract and make smaller everything. I will minimize or maximize just so it all makes me look better. That's the boastings of the mouth. That's the pride of life. The essence is, I'm at the middle. This is laziness because I want to rest and comfort my body. All of these are pride as well as the obvious lust for status and recognition. Pride shows up as a, as a lust for the status of fame or fortune or power or authority. Pride may also be wanting a title that makes heads turn like the top executive or president or executive director or even doctor. In the scriptures, this was Satan's sin. And pride in all its forms is heinous to God. So Satan has three channels that he can communicate with our flesh at all times. And our flesh gets these three channels. Kind of like when I was little, our TV set, little black and white, got three channels. Channel 6, channel 8, channel 10. That's all the channels we got when I was growing up. And it was black and white, and it jiggled a lot, and you know had all the fuzz and, and looked like snow. But we got three channels. Your body gets three channels. Your flesh and mine gets three channels. I either... Have my flesh wanting to chase pleasures, that's the craving of my body. I want my eyes chasing stuff, that's the lustings of my eyes. Or it's my pride to chase status, that's the boasting of my mouth. But Satan's going to get us in one of those areas. Any form of lust, God hates. Lust the eyes, lust the flesh, pride of life. And so any form of lust, we have to flee and hate. 